Hello, Trevor. Welcome to the Watermark Water Cooler. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me here. Yeah. So uh, Trevor has done a lot in sales and marketing. Trevor, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you're up to. So I have over uh, 30 years of sales, marketing, operations, and business experience working for small, medium, and three multi-billion uh, dollar corporations. Uh, in that time as well, I've owned three of my own companies and I've done a lot of small business consulting. Currently, what I'm doing is starting up a new company that is going to specialize in the automation industry. And uh, that's what I plan to do for the next 10 years. And then after that, I hope to retire on some some sunny beach. I like it. I like it. Um, so as we can, as you can tell, you know, Trevor's been doing this for a really long time, has a lot of experience um, from small to large companies. And what we want to talk to you about today, Trevor, is, you know, manufacturing companies and marketing and how do these things work and what are the pitfalls and what are the things that work really well? Um, so can you briefly tell me about your experience in manufacturing and sales? Um, and you know, what, what does that look like? How does that look for you? Yeah. So that, that's a good question. So a lot of the pitfalls when it comes to BB marketing for small business organizations is a, they don't separate out the difference between, they don't separate sales and marketing. They primarily do sales and they do very little marketing. They might have a website. However, they're not uh, optimizing that website, mm -hmm. utilizing a company that provides mm -hmm. SEO and a number of other ways to bring in customers. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is they generally don't have a strategy plan when it comes to marketing. They don't uh, plan marketing campaigns. Uh, they're not uh, sending out regular notices to their customers. Um, they're not. Uh, they're not on a regular basis attracting new customers through marketing techniques or methods. Their primary way of attracting new customers is building relationships one-on-one -on -one from a personal standpoint, mm -hmm. because that's what they know. Uh, they are not up to speed with the latest and greatest when it comes to marketing methods, techniques. Typically they don't have a, anyone who specializes in marketing on the team. Um, and typically in small businesses, the owner is a jack of all trades. And so because their relationship, because things are built on, over on relationships, um, and they understand sales by virtue, by one-on-one, -on -one, they stay in their own lane or in their own little world and, and they don't go outside of that. And so what happens is, is over time, they just continue to go down the same path and do the same thing over and over and over. Well, I, that's, you just laid out a bunch of things. Let's unload some of that. Cause I think you asked or answered some of it. Um, why do you think, uh, you know, budget is one part of that, right? Like I, I'm going to kind of break down some of the things you said. And so one thing I heard you kind of say is like, Hey, they don't, they don't have a, a budget that aside for marketing. Um, what, like, uh, I know that you've been on the side of like trying to convince, uh, you know, Hey, we need budget for this to make this work. What What do you think the the you know was holding somebody back from going? All right, you got to put some budget in, into marketing. Well, a lot of, a lot of the drawback is they they don't know what they don't know. So typically, they're they don't they don't have strategy planning. They don't do strategy documents because they never have and they don't know how to do that. And what they don't understand is that they need to have these plans in place for marketing or for increasing their customers. But in order to do that, you may be a small business, but you need to think like you're a larger organization and you need to start using tools and techniques um, like a larger organization does in order to, to build your small business. The other thing too is um, they need to have a growth mindset. Typically, many small business owners if as long as they're turning a profit and they're making money for themselves, uh, continuously doing the same thing over and over, uh, they're very content with yeah. what's going on. Um, so they don't, they don't, honestly, they just, they don't plan. They don't realize, Hey, I need a budget for this and that, or, or why is that important? I'm making money. I'm doing well and everything's all good today. Yeah. And that, like, you know, that's the next, the next part of that is like, so 
they don't realize, uh, hey, this budget is going to help. Uh, set part of that strategy was going to be like, hey, I got to set a budget. Um, but also that, you know, maybe the mind shift mindset has shifted uh, for the decision makers to, hey, I got to do some research on this company before I make that purchase. Um, and where are they going to go to do that research is online, right? They're going to go do a search. Typically is how most people do the, their uh, initial glance at, hey, I'm looking for XYZ products. I'm going to do a quick, what's out there, you know? Um, and so if you're not findable, and then that's that's part of the problem. Um, but I like, what, what do you feel like is the, with that relationship-based model, what, what did you see as the problem with just going off a relationship? Hey, like you said, hey, they're doing fine with just this uh, plain, same old relationship. Uh, I've, I've got these relationships that I've had. I'm going to keep using them. What, you know, what's wrong with that? Well, the problem I see is it's it narrowly focused. Um, when you do it, doing relationship building, first of all, it can take a long time for those relationships to uh, take hold and build. Second of all, you're, you know, we all have the one constant is we all have the same amount of time. And if we're spending all our time building relationships and we're not using tools and techniques where there's other methods to bring in um, new customers or new prospects, then what happens is, is as over as that time goes on, you're losing out on what you could have. And those other prospects out there that you're unaware will then move to your competition because your competition is using those new, new tools, techniques, and technology to acquire those customers. Did you experience that where you came across somebody who said, yeah, man, if I could have found you earlier, um, I was, I, or I was in that buy buying mindset three months ago. Um, you're too late. You know, like I, it, I would have bought from you if I would have known you existed three months ago. Cause I had a need it three months ago. Now I don't. Yeah, I've experienced that multiple times, uh, consulted with a handful of companies where they want you to prospect by going out and seeing people because that's the only avenue they have. And that's what that's the only method they think that works. And you're absolutely right because you're going out and you're seeing these customers one on one. Numerous times it's it has happened to me where the customer said, Man, if I would have met you only three months ago or four months ago, or hey, we've already spent our money. Or, hey, come back in a year because we'll start the new budget cycle. And if you're out there seeing everybody one one at a time, you you just can't get to all of them at the time in the time that you need to to really make those sales. And 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 I I would bet that anybody that does a role where they're meeting people or building relationships one at a time will come back to you and say they've experienced that over and over and over where the timing uh, just didn't happen when they when they needed it to. Such such a big key of uh, you know doing a good job of this stuff is like how, meeting that person in their buying journey where they're at, um, and who does what salesperson doesn't like a you know a sales qualified lead uh, getting dropped to them who's already done the research and you know at that point in time you're really just a consultant to them and trying to hear what their problems are to, that maybe your solution can can solve for them. Yeah, or when the other thing that can happen too when you're when you're building relationships one-on-one and going down that, that sales path is you'll, you'll meet somebody who's interested, but, um, if the sales cycle is somewhat long while you're continuing to nurture that client and work with them to build to a sale, you're missing out on other prospects. And then what happens now and then for some unforeseen reason, you work on that customer where, you know, the potential customer for two or three months, the sale falls through. And not only did you lose out on those initial prospects, but you obviously lost out on the sale you were working for for the three months as well. Yeah. And that can start setting businesses behind too. Yeah. Oh, that's a really yeah. tough. Uh, there. Did you, so in, in your kind of time when you were consulting with an owner uh, and they were kind of saying like the pushback of, you know, no, I don't need this. What was their kind of biggest reason why was it always budget or was it was there other reasons i would say it's it's a lack of understanding of 
why do we need these tools? How do they work? I've always done the same thing that's worked for me for the past 15 to 20 years. Why do I need to change? Uh, because as we all know, change can be scary. Um, I would think it's more that than even, even budget. It's an educational process and the fact that it takes time. I believe some folks think that uh, when you're going to start utilizing a new tool or technique, hey, things should happen overnight. And it just doesn't work that way. It's going to take a little time to implement, a little time to get it moving, a little time to, to reach out to the prospects and get them going. But if you go down that path, you know, one, two, three years down the road, you're going to get so many more prospects coming in on a regular basis versus doing the same old thing and going, you know, to a prospect one at a time in person. Yeah. It's that's, that's a kind of interesting that you say that it's like more of a fear thing, uh, or an educational thing than it is a budget thing. But I mean, I think the, also the interesting thing about that is you would think that the, the, maybe the, the opportunities that got missed would kind of open eyes to people to say like, Hey, I could have had this opportunity or do they just not aware of those opportunities that are missing? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, but yeah, at the same time, if you think of a small business, if they get one bit, if they get a good sale, they don't think of all the things they're missing out on. They're excited about the one sale. And then that sale can carry them for another month, two or three, and then they're on to the next. And they don't realize how they're missing out or don't realize what their competitors are doing, which is they're gobbling up, you know, their, their potential customers or prospects little by little as time goes on. Sorry for the quick interruption, but I've got some exciting news to share with you all. I'm Cameron, Vice President of Watermark, and I couldn't resist telling you about our brand new CRM learning tool we just developed. The best part, it's completely free for you. We'll dive into essential topics like maximizing your CRM potential, automating those mundane tasks, and ultimately reaching those sales targets. If any of these resonate with you, I highly encourage you to click the description below and join us on this learning journey. I look forward to seeing you there. As you were kind of going into these new places, uh, you know, you were probably a lot of times the first time they had ever heard of the company that you were working with. Like, was the, was that a, uh, I'm assuming that was a sort of barrier to entry of like, hey, Trevor, I've never heard of you before. I've never heard of the company you're working for. Um, and now you're kind of at their uh, mercy a little yeah, that's true. Um, you'd be the first one walking in, first one meeting. Um, they hadn't heard you before. They want to check you out. Uh, they want to see a website. They want references. And then even if all everything pans out and the product seems, uh, you know, the product some something that they're um, interested in, uh, we all know that it's all about the connection between the person coming in and the product. And that's just how good the product is. And if some of these prospects are long distance and they want you back another week or another month, it can be, uh, you know, it can be time consuming to go back, especially if it fl includes flying, it can be expensive, uh, things come up, you not, might, might not be able to make the time frame you need to, or you go back and something comes up on their end and then they're not there or they say, yeah, I'm ready to buy. And then you go back. And you see them you know, a month later or whatever it may be. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, they're not ready to buy. Or the harder thing is you see these customers and it can, it'll can it generally take several visits before you have uh, a strong relationship before they're going to buy something. Because they want to ensure that you're going to you, you're gonna be there for them, right? You're not just the one stop. Do you think that would change if they had... Um, made that first touch digitally and there was some like nurture along the way that could have shortened that cycle? Or do you think they'd have Def still... Yeah. Yeah, I definitely believe it, it, it would help out if there was a digital touch in the beginning because what that does is that's kind of the... That takes care of a lot of the introductory parts and puts it and gives them information they can start digesting, start thinking through, start working through. And then by the time you show up, it's not like you're starting from scratch, right? They, they have some information, they've thought through it, they've kind of decided they want it, uh, those type of things. 
Um, and then when they talk with you, you're just reinforcing what they've already learned or what they already know. Yeah. And I think something you said also about this is like, so if their first touch is the travel piece, the cost associated with the travel piece, just to get you to that, get to that touch, that maybe could have been covered if the budget was ever a conversation that could have been covered in the marketing budget. And then that first touch would have saved a bunch of money. And then, yeah, maybe you needed to have those two extra touches after that, where you were in person, but it saved you, you know, all that travel up front and all that like first center that stuff. So maybe there are some, like, I, maybe that that's still some conversation point, uh, with some people as they're thinking about their business is like, Hey, I could actually save myself some money by reducing the amount of time that people are actually out trying to make that first touch. If they made it first touch with digital approach, um, and, and marketing needs, and then the, this up, which I, I think we both agree on this is like outbound is not a, like you have to have it. Like you, there still has to be a, a relationship built. Um, I would never tell anybody that the, the outbound piece is gone. Like you, you have to have those relationships built where you meet people and have conversations and realize that like, there's something to, especially in, in I think in, in manufacturing, like you trust them, like this, this person's going to be reliable. They're going to get done. I, I, I met Trevor or I met that salesperson and had a really good f- feeling about that connection and they're going to do what they're going to do. Um, so I don't think that you would agree that you are ever going to take that part out. No, you're not going to completely take that part out. But if, if you upfront, um, you can reach out to them digital, you can start building a good relationship, you know, utilizing the phone or email, uh, you can do a lot of touches before you actually go visit the person. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing too, is you got to look at the generational, um, aspect of it. A lot of small business owners today, um, if they're at a certain age, uh, they don't understand the transition that's going on, uh, with technology and digitization and what you'll find with a lot of small business owners, especially if they're transferring that bit, if, if they have a son or daughter involved with the business is you're kind of having a conflict there where the, the older generation is the primary owner of the business is is hanging on and wanting to continue to do the same things and doesn't understand what the younger generation wants to do and the younger generation is trying to get the older generation to move more to a technology technological path and so you kind of have uh a little bit of uh headbutting going on yeah, right <laughs> at this point in time depending on the you know the product or service yeah which actually I, I think that brings us to a really good point is like utilization of a CRM and how are you using that the right way? Um, from my experience, a lot of times I run into, you know, small business owners that are like, again, we're talking small business, but that, that is, can be small business is a, could be a 10, 20 10 million. million. Yeah. Like that's so concerned SMB, you know, small to medium sized business. Um, so they're, they're, we're still talking about a sizable company uh that has never used a crm before uh, and they're still operating off of either like a, a uh, excel sheet that's a roll but basically a glorified rolodex um no there's no documentation of what sales is doing uh so it's kind of like a free-for-all in in, in that world and so that that's another i think a piece of understanding sales and marketing and what's going on because the marketing side can now start using the CRM to understand how to do better touch points and there's automation options and all kinds of things that you can do now to, to help sales out on the marketing side with the CRM. Yeah, I found, I've also found that's, that's a problem as well. And that's been going on for, for quite some time. And I know numerous small businesses that do not utilize a CRM. They either utilize, say, Excel spreadsheets, uh, or the individual people that are responsible for sales have their own method. They may just keep their contacts within uh, their email system or phone system, or the company as a whole will just, you know, they only look at the 
the actual customers they have and they're in, say, their QuickBooks system. But they don't keep track of all the potential prospects they've come across, which can also be used, you know, in an in a automation marketing campaign and, and whatnot. So there's a whole host of uh, gaps in, in that area as well. Yeah. But again, if, if, if the business is making money, uh, everything seems okay to, to many of these folks. And it's just going to take time before everybody uh, moves over uh, to a CRM or whatnot. Or again, still, even today, surprisingly enough, many small business owners have never even heard of a CRM. They ask, what is a CRM? Yeah. What, why do you feel like the particularly the manufacturing seems to, like from again, from my experience, it seems like the manufacturing industry is one of the slower ones to uptake on this kind of new technology. What, 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 you know, is, is it again, just because, Hey, we're making money. So why change or is there other, other reason why? Um, that's a really good question. Um, typically manufacturing, uh, especially in say agricultural food and beverage manufacturing, those type of industries, they're several years behind other companies. Um, that do work with technology. Um, I believe a lot of it is because in many manufacturing companies, especially small, especially if they customize, uh, the people have been there a long time doing the jobs a long time. And a lot of it is, uh, hands on, um, mm-hmm. and it's manually done. Mm-hmm. So, and, and again, it's just, you know, a lot of these folks have been in their, their own world for a very long time. And, when you're uh, working in your own world or you're the jack of, of all trades in your own world, it is hard to get outside of that, go visit other companies, uh, get more experience from other folks mm-hmm. who um, have done a number of other things um, to really grow and expand your business. And then um, at the same time, again, manufacturing as a whole has just generally been been behind. Yeah. Yeah, it's it it's uh it's interesting because while uh manufacturing is is always going to be something in demand uh and I that I, that's what I kind of feel like is part of it is like again we we could just keep doing the same thing because it's always going to be in demand and we don't have to change um I guess I guess my kind of thought is eventually that clock is going to run out in my opinion. And it's like, where are they going to get left behind or, uh, your competitors are going to figure it out and start doing these things. And, you know, yeah, you're just going to get left behind. Um, so, uh, well, Trevor, I think we've covered a bunch of things. I, I appreciate you coming on and giving your kind of perspective on things. Is there, if you had like something to leave to, uh, a manufacturer or owner who is like, on the fence about how these things work and should I actually start committing to some, you know, marketing techniques or, you know, getting into a CRM? Is there, is there anything you'd kind of leave them with to say, like, these are the reasons why we should make the change? I'd say right now, the, the reasons why manufacturing and companies in general need to grasp the the digitization and automation and technology and move to CRMs and things of that nature is costs are rising, labor's becoming difficult, and the world is moving much, much faster. And it's quite clear that those companies that do not take hold of, of all these aspects um, are going to fall by the wayside uh, because they just are not going to be able to compete with the companies that are going down the technology and the automation route and yeah. those things in nature. That That's really what it is. Again, I thank you so much, Trevor, for coming on. Um, we appreciate your time and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right. Thanks, Cameron. Take care. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing to the Watermark Water Cooler. We value your opinion and want to deliver the best content possible. To do that, we need your comments and feedback. What do you want to see or learn? Tools, techniques, behind the scenes? Comment below and make your idea our next video.